Welcome to MedCrime. Today we should be looking at surgical sutures. A surgical suture is a strand of fibrous material that is used to approximate wound tissues together or ligate blood vessels. In the selection of a correct suture material, you need to know the knowledge of healing characteristics of tissues and an understanding of physical properties of various suture materials. The qualities that are important in a suture material include uniform tensile strength, not security, non-allergenic properties, and a high tensile strength retention during wound healing. How are suture materials classified? Sutures are commonly classified into two types, that is absorber sutures and non-absorber sutures. The selection of sutures varies in the duration of the support required, the patient particulars, the cost of the suture materials, and the choice of surgeons. The types of absorber suture materials that we have include polyglycolic acid, polyglactin 19, catgut, polyglycapron 25, and polydioxanone. On the other hand, the types of non absorber suture materials include polypropylene, polypropylene sutures, nylon sutures, polyester, PVDF, PTFE, silk, and stainless steel. Let's start by looking at absorber sutures. Absorber sutures are a types of sutures that are prepared from collagen of animals or synthetic polymers and they are removed from the body by an enzymatic reaction or hydrolysis. All absorber sutures eventually completely dissolve and absorber sutures have some limitations in their use, for example, for patients with fever, infection or poor nutritional status. Absorption of absorber sutures may accelerate and may lead to premature diminution of tensile strength. If these sutures are exposed to significant moisture, for example in patients with ascites, absorption rates are accelerated. Absorber sutures include catgut, that is either plain or chromium coated, polyglactin 19, commonly known as vicryl, with a braided multifilament lactate glycoside polymer. PDS and coated absorber sutures include polyglycolic acid, commonly known as dexon, polyglycapron, that is monocryl, polydioxanon, PDS, polyglyconate, and panacryl. Synthetic absorber sutures are used extensively in most gynecologic surgeries, for example, polyglactin, that is vicryl and polyglycolic acid are often used during procedures such as hysterectomy. These two sutures retain enough tensile strength to be used in fresh cure. Closures Polyglycapron 25 with a trade name monocryl is a new absorber suture that retains 50% of its tensile strength after two weeks. And two monofilament absorber sutures that are useful in fresh cure closures are polyglyconate and polydioxanol. Both of these sutures invoke a little tissue reaction and maintain around 50% of their tissue tensile strength at 4 weeks. These sutures are often used in midline incision closures, for example abdominal hysterectomies. And paracryl or poly is a new absorber suture that is used for in patients with delayed wound healing. At 40 weeks, this suture retains 50% of their tensile strength. On the other hand, we have non-absorber sutures, whereby enzymatic activity or hydrolysis does not digest them. These sutures are composed of multiple filaments of either metal, synthetic fibers, or organic fibers, which are fashioned into strands by twisting, braiding, or spinning. The commonly used and non-absorber sutures are natural silk, cotton, stainless steel wire, known as flexone, nylon polypropylene and braided synthetics, for example, dacron. The use of non-absorber sutures, polypropylene and polybutester is recommended to close fascia in presence of infection. What are the characteristics of an ideal suture? Basically, an ideal suture needs to be flexible, strong enough to close the wound, easily tied and securely knotted, little tissue reaction excitement 
and it will not serve as an idas for infection. But unfortunately in surgery there is no such a thing as an ideal surgical suture. What affects the choice of a suture? The purpose of a suture is to hold the wound together in a good opposition until such a time as the natural healing process is sufficiently well established to make the support from the suture material unnecessary and redundant. Therefore, the choice of suture material depends on properties of the suture material itself, absorption rate of the suture, handling characteristics and properties, knotting properties, size of the suture material and the type of the needle to be used. The natural suture materials can either be classified as absorbable or non-absorbable, same as synthetic suture materials. And in the absorbable bit of the natural sutures, we have catgut that is either in plain form or chromium coated. Catgut is made from the submucous of the bovine intestines. It is usually broken down within seven days, and the chromium coating acts to delay the process of hydrolysis, but it's not to excite a considerable inflammatory reaction to the tissues and tends to potentiate infections. And catgut loses its strength very rapidly and unpredictably in the intestines and in infected wounds as a consequence of the process of enzyme hydrolysis. Therefore, catgut has a very minimal or no use in modern surgery. The non absorbable types of natural suture materials are silk, lining, and stainless steel wires. On the other hand, we have synthetic suture materials that are absorbable, for example, polyglycolic acid. That is dexon, polyglactin and tin, which is vicryl, polydioxanone, and polyglyconate. Non absorbable synthetic suture materials are polyamide, that's nylon, polyester, dacron, and polypropylene, that's proline. It's of importance to know that absorbable switches are broken down by either proteolysis process, for example, catkit, or hydrolysis process, such as vicryl and dexon. Silk is a strong suture material that handles well but induces a strong tissue reaction and capillarity of this material encourages infection causing suture sinuses and abscesses. It is an animal protein but relatively not in human tissues and commonly used because of its favor of handling nature. It loses strength over long periods of time and unsuitable for suturing arteries to plastic grafts and prosthetic cardiac valves. Silk sutures are multifilament in nature and provide a potential having for bacteria. Occasionally, silk sutures form a vocus of small abscesses that migrate and spit through the skin, forming small sinuses that will not heal until the suture is removed. We have steel wires which are in art and maintain strength for a long time difficult to tie and may have to be removed postoperatively because of the pain. It does not have a bacteria and can be left in granulating wounds when necessary. Another type of synthetic non absorbable switches are generally not and retain strength longer. However, their handling characteristics are not as good as those of silk and they must usually be knotted at least four times to six times resulting in large amounts of retained foreign tissues in the body. Sutures also can be classified as either monofilament or multifilament. And in multifilament plastic sutures, we just, which are just as apt to become infected and migrate to the surface as silk sutures are. Monofilament plastic sutures, like wires, will not have bacteria. Nylon monofilament is extremely non reactive but is difficult to tie out. And monofilament polypropylene is intermediate in all these properties. Plastic sutures are required for cardiovascular works because they are not absorbed and vascular anastomosis for prosthetic vascular grafts rely indefinitely on the strength of the sutures. Therefore, the use of absorbable sutures may lead to a neurosin formation. And polydioxanone sulfate sutures are monofilament in nature and lose about half their strength in 50 days, solving the problem of premature breakage in fascia clauses. We have tips and steppers. 
A tip is a skin cloth of choice for clean or contaminated wounds because they minimize the possibility of infection by not introducing a foreign body in the form of a skin suture, connecting the tissue surface to the wound dead space. They cannot be used in actively bleeding wounds or wounds which have complex services such as those in the perineum. On the other hand, staples, whether for internal use or skin closure, are mainly steel tantalum alloys that are known to insert a minimal tissue reaction. The technique for stable placement is different from that of suture placement, but the same basic rules pertain. So, there are no real difference in the healing that follows suture or stable closures. The staples are preferable for sutures for skin closure because they do not penetrate the skin and do not provide a conduit for contaminating organisms. Staples are not preferable to skin tips. What are the common errors of suture use? Too many throws increase the foreign body size and causes stage abscesses. Intracuticular rather than subcuticular sutures are known to cause hypertrophic scars and holding of monofilament sutures with instruments reduces their tensor strength by over 50% and holding part of the needle causes needles and sutures to break.